So this is the part of the build where things start to get interesting. All those random piles of parts are now forming an engine. And when we last left off, we knocked our pistons and rods in. And since then, let's come down here. We mounted our rear seal. We've got our strainer on, our oil strainer. We mounted our oil pump. Now before we put the pump on, we filled the cavity, you know, between the, the gear and the rotor with assembly lube and then rotated it by hand with our thumb over the inlet to make sure that there was suction. So we know we have suction. The filter right here is, is the filter is only on here now just to keep dirt out of it. Uh, this will get filled with oil before we actually go ahead and start the engine. But this is just hanging out here right now. So that stuff done, before we put the heads on, we need to check our cam. So here's the story with this cam. This cam came out of an engine. I saved this thing. Actually, I had it in, run it in an engine years ago, and I saved it. And I saved the lifters. These are the lifters, and these are the order that they came out. So they're going to go back in in this order. Okay, this is the front. That's the back. But we still need to check things anyway, right? So a couple of things that we're going to check. And like this is, I can't tell you how important this is, right? So the first thing we're going to check is we're going to check the index marks on the timing gear. Oh, here, come over here. Defects are rampant. And it's not uncommon to have marks off in different places where they shouldn't be. What we, need, what we need to do here is we brought our number one cylinder to top dead center. This is our new crank gear, and we see our dot is facing straight up. Here's our new cam gear, and we installed it dot to dot. Okay, so now how do we confirm that this is accurate? Top dead center, dot, dot. But how do we know that the cam is indexed correctly? So this is where we go and we degree the cam. Now, before you start getting all like, oh, I gotta learn how to degree a cam. We already did a whole video on how to degree a cam with a feeler gauge. I'll put a link to that so you can go back and look at it. I have a degree wheel. I got one sitting over there. I use it as a Frisbee. I've been using the Keith Black method of degreeing camshafts for 40 years now, and it works every time. So here's all you need to do, right? Top dead center number one, which incidentally, if you're dealing with a, a V8 or 184-36572 V8 Chrysler Chevy, or, number six is also going to be a top dead center. And this is, this is crucial a little bit later, and uh, we'll get to that. Top dead center number one. Confirm that your timing gear marks are lined up. If the timing gear marks are lined up, what you need to do now is confirm that the camshift is at split overlap. Split overlap is when the, both the intake and the exhaust valves are open the same amount. That's top dead center of the exhaust stroke. Okay? All engine timing is, is based from that period. Top dead center of the exhaust stroke. And like I said, at that point, both the intake and the exhaust valves are going to be somewhat open. Now, it depends on the style of the cam, the grind of the cam, how much they're open. That's your overlap period. When both of them are open, that's overlap. But I don't want to confuse anybody with any of that stuff right now. Let's just stick to the simple basics. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that our cam is at split overlap. Now, on these big block Chryslers, it's a little difficult because the lifter... As you can see here, the lifter is below the surface of the bore. So here's the lifter, and you see it drops below the surface of the bore. If this was, let's say, a, a small block or it was a Chevy motor, these lifters are going to be slightly above. They're going to be sitting about, like, right about there. And what you're going to want to do is take a straight edge and lay it across and make sure that the straight edge touches all four points of the lifters. Now we can't do that with this engine, obviously. So what we do is we take a pair of lifters and stack them like that. Okay. Yeah, I know. See, I'm, I'm trying to do this for the camera. So we stack them like that and we lay our straight edge across. Okay. Now, if this, was, if this camera's ground exactly split overlap, the, the 
lifter, the straight edge would be touching all four points of the lifter, but you can see that it's not. You see there's a gap right there, okay? Now that gap measures out to 12 thousandths of an inch, okay? Here's your rule of thumb. Every two degrees of camshaft timing equals six thousandths of an inch gap at those lifters, checking it the way I just showed you. Since we have 12 thousandths of an inch, six thousandths equals two degrees, 12 thousandths equals four degrees. So this camshaft is ground with four degrees of advance in it. So when this thing is all top dead centered, this cam is already advanced. Now I check that against the spec of the cam. And this is important, this is why you need to have your cam card or at least know which cam grind you're using so you can look it up online. And this cam is ground four degrees advanced. So I confirmed it and it's perfect. If you're using just a regular stock cam, let's just say you, you're putting a, a 350 Chevy together with an RV cam and you know there's no nothing ground into it, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have both the intake and the exhaust valve are gonna be open exactly the same amount. Now, if you find that there's a major discrepancy, let's say it's 20, 30, 40 thousandths of an inch height difference between these lifters, you know that the cam is indexed wrong. That either the cam gear, the crank gear, the cam gear, or whichever, whatever device that cam uses, like some of them have a keyway, this one here has a dowel, you know that that's gonna be off. So now you have to go back and see which one is which, where your problem is. So, if it's a regular stock cam, it's going to be split overlap. So those are just going to be dead even. Now here's what you want to do is you want to confirm that the cam is ground straight and it's not twisted. So you repeat the same thing at number six. You rotate the motor, you rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees. So now both of the dots are facing up. And when both of the dots are facing up and top dead center over here, you should have the same thing at number six. And depending on what kind of engine you're dealing with, different engines have cylinders that will reach top dead center simultaneously, and they're always going to be opposite of each other. So you rotate the motor, you rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees, and then you check and confirm that the cam is ground, is indexed correctly, and is ground correctly, and you've got that same measurement at the back of the engine. And we've already done this. So this is all still together for mock-up. Come over here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this back apart and this timing chain is going to get soaked in oil overnight because the rollers, yeah, you, you, you got to get oil inside the rollers, a tight space. So we'll use a thin oil, soak this overnight in the thin oil and this is what we know that it's not going to be subjected to, you know, dry running and potential stretch before the engine ever actually has a chance to really do its thing. And also when you put these together. I, I, I'm, very, I'm very sparing of Loctite. I, I use Loctite very, very uh, uh, infrequently. I use it on flywheel bolts, torque converter bolts, that sort of stuff. And this bolt right here, the one that goes into the cam, there's a lot of harmonics, a lot of noise that gets transferred in this area. And these things will vibrate themselves loose. So you want to use some Loctite on whatever bolts that are holding the timing gear to the uh, timing gear to the camshaft. All right, so we'll leave that for now. Now one other thing that's important before we move on to the next phase is you want to check the lifter drop. And you want to be able to do this with everything dry, right? No lube on the, on the lifter, no lube in the engine. And the reason you do this is because the lifter has to be able to fit freely in the bore. It's got to be able to rotate freely without any resistance. You need to be able to drop the lifter here, come here. You need to be able to take the lifter and just drop it into the bore and it's going to be able to free fall just like that. And you want to check each of your bores to make sure that they'll free fall just like that. So that's in today's environment with like all the faulty lifters, cam problems and everything, you want to make sure you go through that step so that you don't have to second guess yourself. A sticky a lifter sticking in the bore will wipe out the cam in no time flat. And also, we're reusing this cam, but we're still going to, we don't have to go through a whole break-in procedure. The lifters that we're using on this cam are already made it to the lobes, but because everything is dry, we're still going to coat it with cam break-in loop. We don't have to go through the whole 20-minute procedure and everything, but you want to give it a, at least a, a fresh start before it starts throwing oil up at it, just to make sure that it's all happy. So the next phase 
is we're going to clean this up, soak our timing chain, and then we're going to drop the heads on it. And we're also going to talk about head gaskets. And we're going to talk about one of the most persistent myths in the history of the internal combustion engine. So you're not going to want to miss that. Stay tuned for the next thrilling installment of the 3D3 Slag Hammer build. And that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.